Well, the big extraordinary scenes in Berlin tonight as thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver a key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. The Democratic presidential hopeful laid out his vision for America's place in the new world order, saying he was speaking as a proud citizen of the world, of the world, of the world. It is a big idea, idea, idea. It is a big idea, idea, idea. A new world order. It is a Hello, friends. I am the anti terrorist. Thank you for all of your emails and your messages of support and for staying part of the conversation. Yeah, baby! It's Christmas! Yeah. Woohoo. It's Christmas. Yeah! Isn't it exciting? Yeah, good luck trying to calm me down. Man, this is a special time of year. I am psyched! Yeah, Christmas. A time when people of all religions come together to celebrate the birth of Santa. Dude, blessed is the season which engages the whole world in a conspiracy of love and understanding. <sighs> Whatever. Well, it's that time of year again. It seems to come around faster and faster these days. Or maybe I'm just getting old. Now, if you followed my ramblings here on YouTube, you'll know that although I have a great deal of faith in a higher power, I don't believe there's a great deal of virtue in organized religion. As someone very bright once said, good men do good things and evil men do evil things, but only organized religion makes good men do evil things. Having said that, I do celebrate the Christmas holiday without restraint or remorse. Now, one of the things I've noticed about this time of year is that for two or three days either side of Christmas Day and for two or three hours either side of New Year's Eve, there's a tangible but transient shift in consciousness towards being more forgiving, accepting, open, loving. You get the picture, I'm sure. Religious folks might call it the Holy Spirit. Atheists might call it the effects of alcohol. Agnostics might sit on the fence and call it nothing at all. But to my mind, it's the manifestation of agreement in the collective unconscious. An agreement that we need a truce, and to come back together and take a little respite before continuing to experience the divergence that makes life interesting. It's a little like the football match between the English and the Germans that took place on Christmas Day 1914 during the First World War. Now, if that isn't a profound example of a shift towards a higher level of consciousness, I don't know what is. In my humble opinion, it can be used to move beyond whatever limitations you've placed upon yourself by virtue of being in whatever group you've placed yourself in or have been placed in by others. However, as I said, it is fleeting, and we soon get back to our old patterns of separation, fear, anger, and judgment. Try tuning into your feelings over the next few days and see if you still have the sensitivity to the change in energy we once had in spades when we were children. Perhaps it's been beaten out of you by one thing or another. But if you do have children, you'll know how infectious their way of being is around this time. And that may or may not entirely be due to the fact that they're expecting an Xbox 360. But the energy is heightened and joyous. Tune into it. If you can't beat them, join them. I know I have a real aversion to the commercialism this time of year. And it can be difficult not to get all bar humbug and miss an opportunity to make amends to forgive and to appreciate the best things about the people you're surrounded by. The thing some people seem to forget is that the whole point of any of these holiday observances, ignoring semantics and dogma, is to be thankful for everything you have and enjoy the time together with family and friends. It's a time to put aside the pettiness and egocentricities that plague us during the year, to simply be happy and allow others to do the same. Yet some jaded folks feel the need to take an otherwise positive event and twist it into unnecessary ammunition, an excuse to cause friction where there needn't be any. And call it what you will, this particular holiday is too vital to risk devaluation through pointless bickering. We need a holiday that reminds us all how to be tolerant, how to be considerate of others, and most importantly, to be joyful. The modern society has developed a real knack for forgetting these traits at the drop of a hat. And in times like this, we need a reminder of the things that are truly important, even if that reminder only comes once a year. And as we go into 2011, 
Keep in mind that we're programming ourselves moment by moment. And the conversations you engage in and give energy to serve to program you to a certain mindset. And as I've asserted in a previous broadcast, no one can assert anything into your experience without your consent, without you vibrating at the same frequency and accepting it into your reality. However, once you accept another's idea and begin to operate at the same frequency, you give the idea more power. And as the idea gets more and more agreement, as more and more focus is given to the idea by virtue of conversation and enrollment, the greater and more powerful the idea gets until it reaches a critical mass when it's accepted as truth and created as reality. Now, the hundredth monkey effect is a supposed phenomenon in which learned behavior spreads instantaneously from one group of monkeys to all related monkeys once a critical number is reached. It's supposedly the instantaneous species-wide flashpoint of an idea or ability. Now, a classic example here is the New World Order conversation. We're all waiting for that hundredth monkey, aren't we? Waiting for the awareness of the New World Order to reach critical mass so that we can somehow stop it. Now, the idea of the New World Order is growing in power. And what we may not be realizing is that our fear of it our concentrated focus on it whilst vibrating in the frequencies of fear and anger may well be bringing it about faster. After all, when we have conversations with our friends on the subjects of RFID chips, prison planet, the elite, and being controlled, 2012, World War III, Project Bluebeam, the Jews, the Zionists, and so on, are we not creating? Are we not giving power to the idea having been subjugated by it? Have you considered the possibility that the hundredth monkey might just turn out to be a 300 pound gorilla with a taser? And we have to be aware of the frequencies and ideas that we submit ourselves to. We are co-creators and all that stops us from creating, all that acts as an inertia to our idea becoming our creation, is our ability to focus with enough desire and intent or fear. And if we can accept what I've just said is true, and not only do we have to be responsible and aware of what we're creating for ourselves on an individual level, but we also have to consider what we may be creating as a whole. Decide what you'd like to see manifest, and steer yourself away from conversations that lead you away from what you really want. New Age Mumbo Jumbo? Who knows? It works for me. Now, the powers that be are going to be doing stuff over this holiday break. You can bet your life on it. They'll be a testicle terrorist or a breast bomber or a rectum radical escorted onto an international flight or train by the authorities. And we'll undoubtedly see more ludicrous legislation and so on. And you know how that goes. We can't really stop them doing the clandestine crap, but we can call them on it after the fact. They obviously really want to touch our junk. Anyhow, let them get on with their nefarious nonsense and try to focus on enjoying the rest and being with our families. Or, you can get all bar humbug about it, and have a miserable time worrying about their next move. It's your call. Personally, I choose the more empowering option. I'm going to focus on keeping my spirits up, and enjoy spending quality time with those I care about. Now, speaking of conversations, I'd love to see more of you good YouTube watchers and listeners do a little more talking. You know, I am what David Icke would call a repeater. A repeater. Now, there's been no original thought come out of my melon for as long as I can remember. I'm just studying, assimilating, and regurgitating the ideas and concepts that resonate enough truth to have an impact. Sure, I have a little inspiration now and then when it comes to trying to make the information more accessible, but I'm really just trying to make a difference by passing on information that's already out there to those who may not find it otherwise. My point here is that you don't have to have radical insight to engage in the conversation. You don't even have to have your own opinions. If the opinion facilitates an understanding that raises frequency, you owe it to the conversation to express that opinion. Now, when I first donned this GIMP outfit, I had no idea I'd have an audience. I just felt the need to express my opinions and reaffirm the opinions of others that resonated with me. I don't know how long I can keep this up. My time is becoming more and more valuable and scarce the older my children get. And I only committed to broadcasting as long as I had the time and was inspired to. I hope you'll consider the possibility that you have something to contribute. And make 2011 the year that you did. You could make a difference to thousands. 
Anyhow, I sincerely hope you have a shift this Christmas. Tune in and make the most of this fleeting rays in vibration, and see how long you can hold on to it, whatever it means to you. Oh, and if any of the politically correct brigade are watching this, and take offense at my use of the word Christmas, recognize that that thought is not your own. It's been implanted. Take a chillaxative and lighten up. You're not helping. Hey, you know, I think I learned something today. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or Jewish or atheist or Hindu. Christmas is about one very important thing. Yeah, it's a Christmas miracle! You get that Christmas isn't a date, it's a state of mind? Whatever. Christmas is about something much more important. What? Presents! Uh, don't you see, man? Presents! Yeah, baby! It's Christmas! So thank you for being able to see past the theatrics, the mask, the glasses, and the Barry White tones to hear the messages. I hope you've managed to assimilate them and have moved on to create more powerfully for yourself. Be well, Merry Christmas, and have a very happy New Year. Thanks for listening.